Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. Today I will explain the Sharia concept of Tawaru. For easy understanding, let me illustrate the concept. This is Mr. Wong. He wanted to buy a house priced at 500,000 ringgit. After paying the down payment of 50,000 ringgit to the developer, he went to shop for home financing package. He approaches an Islamic bank and attracted to a financing package under the Sharia concept of Tawaru. Although he is a non-Muslim, he can secure a financing from an Islamic bank to purchase a house because Islamic banking is for all, regardless of race and religion. But what is Tawaru and how does it work? Mr. Wong needs financing of 450,000 ringgit to pay the balance price of his house to the housing developer. An Islamic bank cannot loan the money and charge interest because it is forbidden in the Quran, as mentioned under chapter 2, verse 275. It says, "But Allah has permitted trade and has forbidden interest." In Islam, lending money is a benevolent act. Lender cannot charge interest, or the term mentioned in the Quran is riba. The bank, on the other hand, is not a charitable organization. Its existence is to make money for its shareholders. Therefore, the bank would arrange a win-win transaction to enable the customer to obtain cash today, make staggered payments, and at the same time profiting the bank. Mr. Wong enters into a wakala or agency contract with the bank. In this contract, the bank acts as an agent to buy or sell commodity from or to the market. Subsequently, there are three sales and purchases in this arrangement. Number one, the bank buys 450,000 ringgit worth of commodity from the market. Then. As a merchant, the bank would sell the same commodity to Mr. Wong at cost plus profit, say 774,000 ringgit, payable in equal instalment of 2,150 ringgit per month within the next 30 years. Now, Mr. Wong has the commodity worth of 450,000 ringgit. Mr. Wong does not want the commodity. Instead, He would want to monetize the commodity and take the cash for his house purchase. Therefore, he asks the bank, as his agent, to sell the commodity to the market for 450,000 ringgit cash. Mr. Wong would use the cash proceeds of 450,000 ringgit to pay the developer. Mr. Wong also now indebted to the bank by 774,000 ringgit. Be paid in equal instalment within the next 30 years. Due to the debt, the bank would mortgage the house as a security. So now that we understand the basic concept of tawaru, I shall explain on the essential elements of the contract in the next video. I hope that this video helped you to understand about the basic concept of tawaru. If you have further questions or comments. Please post it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye.